Steve Merchant. It's with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sentences it's and all that. Uh, just using the well, traditional pointing, English language. But you put me off, you pointed to yourself and I just said Steve Merchant. But you know what, we normally do that every week. You introduce me. Yeah. You say with me and I go Steve Merchant. No, yeah. So like, it's a catchphrase that everyone's waiting to hear it. <laughs> no, but usually I go Ricky Gervais and that and you go with Steve Merchant. But this time you pointed to you so I said it. But I didn't say it. I, it caught me off guard so I didn't <laughs> use the sentence. Oh, I don't like the way you sit. Right? I've read medically that if you're slouching like that, can you try and describe how you're sat? It's but you've got the kind of mic. Have you ever seen that picture of when John Lennon was off his head on smack recording Let It Be, and he was lying on the floor at Abbey Road? <laughs> That's basically what Ricky okay, looks like now. Explains, I was scared. It's not good for you. That look at the you you not you you can't breathe probably in the diaphragm, no. so you're going to get speak badly. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Hey, listen, I was trying oh. to speak medical stuff there. I was yeah, trying to run yeah. into trouble. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Rick, 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 what? what are the words to wham rap? <laughs> no, what are the words to wham hey, rap? I don't remember wham rap. What the hell's got into you? Hey, sucker. Now there's nothing you can do. Brilliant. I look forward to um, a forthcoming revival of your music career. Yeah. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for or it. Or a I, PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on, uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh... So the thing I just say, the thing about Steve is, is, uh, I wouldn't say he's mean, he hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days to get a pound off. Rick. Go Two on. and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place, right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right? right. For a, a console and a game. Right. So I ended up in Virgin Mega Store, I bought a, uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, yeah. and a PlayStation and a memory card or whatever. So I shoot off and I'm walking off and I'm going to the tube and I walk all the way to HMV, um, <clears throat> on, uh, opposite Bond Street. Sure. And I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something. And I went downstairs and I was walking past the, uh, Playstations and it went, if you buy a Playstation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with 20 pounds off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore going, it's faulty. Uh, but like oh no. before, you haven't even got home yet. Oh, I can tell. No, I didn't mean to buy this though. What did you <laughs> buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. I'm buy a so the problem is when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the track. All I'm thinking is it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just <laughs> see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> and all I could see on the TV was just a big 20, 20 pound. pound note just floating. <laughs> It was an absolute oh night. I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid, I could have bought, like, another cheap game for that. We went to the, did I tell you this? Rick, we went, we're, would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us, and I lost about 100 quid, and, uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday, uh, I think it was Jane's birthday, and Steve, after three hours of gambling, had lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with. Right. I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? He just went, Do you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for £20? Yeah. Cold was... meats. Yeah. For <laughs> £20. And there it is again last night. <laughs> £20. I'm robbed of £20. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. I they've can't believe it. They've taken that and they've... I'm going to try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. Okay. That's done. Yeah. All right. Carl came in this morning and he said he was soaking wet because obviously it's miserable out. And actually, if you're thinking of leaving the house today and thus missing the show, do not leave because it's miserable out. It's, it's like a weather out. report as well. We play music, we've got chat, we've got little jokes, don't we? But Carl um, came and it's he raining. He said he was soaking wet. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Rick would want you to do it. I want yeah. you to do it. Yeah. Just take your clothes off. Pop yeah. them over there. But do you know what? And he wouldn't. And he said I was going to do it, but I knew you'd say that. But w when you left us in the kitchen when he was making coffee, he went. Yeah, Steve said, if you're wet, take your trousers off. And I thought, hold on, Ricky's not here, what's he up to? <laughs> <laughs> that little yeah. thought. No, yeah. I was talking on behalf of Rick. I phoned him up, I said, he he's wet, what shall I suggest? Well, I said, well, I, I, I was in his ear, I was, he had an earpiece, and I was going, tell him it's bad for him. Yeah. And I could hear him go, it's bad for you, and you go, well, no, I'm right. go, no, tell him it's, it could... Rheumatism. Yeah. It could lead to rheumatism, drop, take him off. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, speak, no one's heard your voice today. Come on, Carl. Come he on, doesn't want to. No, I know he doesn't. We're not, we won't talk to you much, All but right. go on. it's just nice to say hello to you. Yeah. Right. People, I think people quite like they tune to in know you're here. You. Yeah. We've had some fan mail for I you. like his little face, his no. little Moby. I drew a picture of him in the week, just doodling, and he got really insulted. Did he? Why did you get insulted? Because it wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Camfield on it. 
<laughs> oh, 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 that's an insult. Yeah. The ladies love Canfield. Yeah. I mean, they're weird kind of heavy metal ladies. Yeah, but yeah. The, the ones that drink blood. Yeah. Yeah, they love Canfield. I thought of you look like today, but I think you might find it insulting as well. It's just oh, meant to be affectionate. You, uh, for people who don't know what you look like, you look like Beaker at the Muppets. <laughs> I, I can't see how that would be an insult. <laughs> Ah! Oh, God! We don't need to put it like that. It is, but it's sort of like, I like Mika. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you like him because he's a fool. <laughs> he just goes, M what did he do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you look a bit like that doctor that used to accompany him everywhere. That professor. Oh, yeah. The little he's fat like, little bloke. Fat one, yeah. yeah, that's nice. Carl, what was it that you told me as well when you came in? Just, just Carl's thought for the day. Okay. Carl, what did you tell me when you came in? Because it was miserable out, and you, and you so made it, a it is a grim day in London. Um, <laughs> I like it already. I was, I was thinking, um, oh. could you imagine dying today? <laughs> Go on, explain more though. Just because when you're dying, yeah. you're always like in your bedroom, in your bed, and your always and your family's next door. Always, yeah. And um, I just thought, can you imagine lying there, looking out your window? Because they do that as well. They sort of have the curtains open to get a bit of light on your face. And I just thought. What a day. If this was like your last day, could you imagine? You said if instead of dying on a rainy day, you'd prefer to... No, if you died on a, on a bit of a, a nicer sunny day, then it's not so bad. What <coughs> is that? No, it's your last day looking out on the world. Yeah. And it, look at it. Don't you agree? Yeah. I, oh, I thought that was a beautiful point. It was poetic, almost. It was, wasn't it? Because, oh. no, no, the point was that, that what, what upset me was that you said you'd been thinking about that today on the way in, and it upset you. But uh, my point was that there's, if you think about the people that are dying any day, it'll upset you. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, but you don't think about it when it, when it's sunny because you think, well, they'll be all right today. They won't be that annoyed. But You're absolutely annoyed. Like, annoyed. But today, yeah, think of that. Oh, I'm written. No. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm dying, dying today. Oh, it, was no. just, it was just when I got up and opened the curtains and I thought, look at it. I'm yeah. glad I'm not dying today. Mm. Yeah. You know this, right? I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> the radio show. Oh yeah, yeah. we do, right? Well, we just come in and we don't plan them, we just sort of like chat. Yeah. And it, it, they still pay us, it seems yeah. good out well. Should we just do this all day? Like, get a license where it is just, it's Ricky and Steve FM. <laughs> and we just chat and we go, what are you doing there, Steve? Just having breakfast. You go, all oh, right, yeah. 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 Well, what are you doing there, Steve? I'll just clean the windows and that. And we have a little chat and we go, I'm oh, just reading the paper. And it, we just talk and we play records. For 24 hours a day? Yeah. I mean, have you spotted any flaws in that plan or? It would be boring after about an hour and a half. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. I mean, this is boring now. It's just the, it, we were talking about a car having a thought, remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I had that thought when I went, I went out to get some orange juice and I had that thought. So maybe this show could be about, let's, let's have thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so we have thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> okay, or they could, if we haven't got any, they could phone in with some. Okay, or email a thought maybe if you've got a thought. But can we not make those thoughts racist or homophobic though, please? Yeah. Or, um, not downers. No, nothing that's going to bring us down, you know? Yeah. Upbeat stuff. Yeah. Go on, Carl. You do, gonna... do you know when you said 24 hours then? Yeah. Do you know how much it takes <laughs> to run one of the escalators on the underground for 20 hours a day? How much it costs a year to do that? To run it how long? 20 hours a day? Yeah, that's what it runs. The, the Is this another hours. of your, your facts? Mm -hmm. These are always These are always substantiated by an independent source, aren't they? They're not just something you overheard on a bus. Am I? Just, just to check. This I is fact. I read it. <laughs> okay. in, Did you I read it on a wall in some, a sandwich some, shop? Sometimes I wish this was on telly because when Steve said this, you have these substantiated by an independent arbitrator or something, Carl just looked at him yeah. like he'd just spoken <laughs> French. <laughs> he just looked like that. It just, it. Okay, so anyway, th this, this information you've got from a reliable source, you read it on the back of a fag packet or something? No, I think it was in the Metro magazine in the week. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, okay. So here's the, what's, and let's just hear it again. How much does it cost? Yeah, <laughs> there's loads of escalators, isn't there, in, on the underground? Yes. And they run for 20 hours a day. Yes. This is like some sort of mental home radio. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I mean, we, we are, I mean, we, we're not mentally ill. We haven't, you know, we haven't got, have only head trauma. Um, we're educated people. Yeah. But we come out with just rubbish. Gobbledygook. Just nonsense. It's like, I can't grasp. I don't know why he started saying. I've no, I've no idea what that thought you just was. Said, you just said twenty four hours about doing radio for twenty four hours. So I remember. I thought, oh, twenty twenty hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway, listen. You had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. Right. <laughs> um, how much does it cost <laughs> to run one escalator? That's just one. Yeah. 
on a London Underground. It's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night when they're cleaning up and that. Yeah. yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? Twelve pounds. <laughs> Sixty thousand pounds. The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. It well, well, think about, like, <coughs> your yearly electric bill. <laughs> at home. Well, when you put it like that, when you can... <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. <laughs> Carl, play a song. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. See, it doesn't work if you say with me, Steve no, Merchant. it doesn't work. I've got to say either, I've either got to say with me, Steve, or you just go with Steve Merchant. Sure, sure, sure. See what I mean? Okay. It's not as easy, is no, it? No, it's not. No. It's not as easy as it seems. Um, I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, and he was looking at me, and... I look back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Uh, does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> yeah, I caught, I caught ya. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the yeah. way. Yeah. You didn't prove <laughs> I was gay, I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. I don't even use, uh, sort of, flies. No? Usually, I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my wife on, uh, my, sort of, tracksuit. No, that's why I wear, sort of, like, elasticated waist yes, pants all the time. Just sort Speed. of, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got to get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. No, well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish I hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> oh, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Everyone well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying. I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphones. You know, it's the little pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was going to see where the, what the, what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if it's a problem. Alright. Why yeah. am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are, generally the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or, that this is probably or up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> Carl <laughs> gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, 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 my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's genius, it's a genius idea. Did, Would it? you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboon serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day when they went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're, like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. Could I, if you do get, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with like, you know, beef and steak and chips and all that. But you, you know, there's a little button. I go, do you want- <laughs> Can you imagine that, the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen and you could go- If they were serving tickets to two? Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. 
Okay. But I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of pen. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they was, did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, yeah. Just, just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay, they're not they? No one actually knows if they are gay no, or not. they are. All right. Okay, well, yeah. They, okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's it, those artists. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway. Who, have... but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they no, don't- I just look... said that so you knew, knew what I was talking about, cause sure. Okay, the two gay ones, no, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then all. Yeah, if you shave on. a tiger's head- <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head, not just its head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on. Then, yeah, if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. Skin, the skin. Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, way like all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's. I remembered that. Like I was. Was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still stripy. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I must yeah. make a note of that thing's calm. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting fact. Well, you know a polar bear? A polar bear's, um, skin is actually, um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion, so it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black- A polar bear's skin is black. And its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we- Well, it's just cause the, the light- hits it and- The sun reflects on yeah, it. Yeah, and it makes it look white, yeah. So, if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at there, night, it would be black? <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. Oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> You've embarrassed yourself. Play a record! Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I think so. Is it the one where, um, They've got a line in it, they've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money? You're money? No. You're so Jeremy money. G that's it, yeah, yeah, mm. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. I love the fact that I said, you're the money, you went, no. You went, you're so the money, you went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is from, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, yeah. that's Show Me the Money. Yeah. So more from the, uh, facts and trivia book. Edited, as I say, by Sir Isaac Asimov, so sure. not just overheard on the tube or, yeah. uh, by a drunk. <clears throat> well, he might have overheard him on a tube by a drunk. True. And just put him in a book. <laughs> yes. Uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during World War One. Sure. In their denunciation of all things German, some Americans actually kicked Datsuns. Are they little dogs? Yeah. Little German dogs, just give them a kick in. Because they were German. Or they were derived from Germany. I don't know if they got to like a small sort of French village and just said, bring out your Dachshunds. <laughs> Why, what are you going to do to them? Nothing. Give them a little bit of food or something. You're not going to kick them, are you? Got no, some milk. Because I've heard about you Americans. Uh, no, no. Just bring out that little sausage dog. We, you say it aggressively. <laughs> you said that aggressively. Like well, you, no, no. Bring out the little sausage dog. Okay. Well, you're not going to hurt it though. Of course I'm not. not if you hurt it. it now, it's like it's against the Geneva Convention. I'm everything. not going to kick it. Well, you, I didn't even bring up kicking. Uh, I didn't even mention kicking, so why have you, <laughs> why have you done that? That's... I don't know. Just well, I, I, I I haven't got a Datsun. If, oh. Sacre bleu. Yeah. Sorry. That thing down my trousers is just a baguette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that, Carl? Do you remember Dynamite that? Fact. Dynamite fact. Baguettes were invented by Napoleon so he could carry him down his leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. which is fine. There's one more here that I thought might, uh... I know that there's a lot of those kind of amusing laws and stuff, antiquated laws and that on the yeah. web and things, but again, it's Asimov. <laughs> I'm thinking it's yeah. true. City Ordinance Number 352 in Pacific Grove, California, makes it a misdemeanor to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? <laughs> yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. So if it goes- Don't even look at it aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Butterfly comes down and go, what are you looking at? I go, nothing. Yeah. And he goes, judge! What? <laughs> yeah. Like, looking at me with the net. I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't doing anything. I'm fishing. But what, see, the thing about that is, a lot of the kind of, you know, sort of the wilder butterflies from the wrong side of the tracks, they're just gonna take advantage of it. They're gonna cruise around, they're gonna be playing loud music, yeah. you know, abusing old people. You're yeah. un they're untouchable. And they're gonna go, have you got a problem with that? <laughs> exactly, you go, And no. you're gonna go, no. No, it's fine. Go about your business. No. Butterflies there, Rick, in California, running amok. Yeah. Should repeat it. Yeah. Um, no then, there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh, Facts and trivia, the last one, Rick. Go on. Uh, this is a sobering lesson for us all. Go on. 
At the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901, yeah. President William McKinley received a line of citizens, shaking hands with each. In the line was a man with a handkerchief covering one hand. Mm. Neither of the two Secret Service men guarding the President was curious enough to take a look at what might be under the handkerchief in the hand of the man, Leon Golzgoz, an anarchist. Yeah. What he had was a loaded revolver, and when the President thrust his right hand out for the shake, Zolgozd fired twice. McKinley died a week later. So, what he did there, it was outwit the might of presumably the FBI or the yep. Secret Service by covering the gun with a handkerchief. Clever. That's brilliant. It's absolute genius. J just think how they had to explain that. And they go, uh, wh wh how did they get, how did he get close enough and shoot the president? And they go, uh, we didn't see the gun. Why? Covered it with a hanky, did he? Oh, well, you're not to blame then. <laughs> exactly, we, ca we can't compete with that sort of, you know, uh, didn't you think to look under the hanky? No. No, I just, probably just thought it was a hand. Of course, because right. that's where the hand would be. Did you not think he was probably holding a gun or something? Didn't do that. We didn't train. We didn't do hiding it with a hanky, did we? Oh, if he didn't do it, then it's not your fault. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But he lived, did he, for a week? The president lived with it for that's, a week, yeah. That's because they had to go to him and they're probably shuffling around his bed going, sorry about that. Why don't you look? I had a hanky, did he? <laughs> oh, where well, they're now in jail. Well, they were. Go on. Well, when we went into the jail to give him some bread and water, he had a hanky over his hand. Right, yeah. We, we thought nothing of it. Sure. And it was a gun, yeah. It was a gun and he got out. See, he sh do you remember the last, remember the gun, yeah. That's terrible, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I know. <noticed. laughs> because it was effective there, but you don't hear about that now. <laughs> no. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. I, th I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wife. Well, they didn't, they I didn't, didn't study it in history class, that's my memory of but it. But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Yeah. Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking of uh, murdering someone, you know, a, a dignitary. With a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say- Pop a hanky you, over it. Just think about that. Just pop a hanky over oh, it. I don't know, pop it inside an oven glove. <laughs> And just yeah. wear that as you go do it with their hands. <laughs> or you sooty. Or, or one of those <laughs> big gladiator style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands that you used to have <laughs> yeah. on gladiators. Yeah. That'd be genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the I love the president. No gun in there, is there? No. no. It's just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well no, we won't then if you said check. <laughs> right. That's 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 oh. unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of um assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice one? cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet up. You get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, cause it's my story to tell. Oh, Blab there's two, out. I know two of them. <laughs> well listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? Mm. This is genius. Mm. Right, you rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? Yeah. And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice. Okay, and then what you do is you uh, you you train like to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's an yeah. old one. It is brilliant, but it's, this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow. Then it goes across the street into their heart, kills them instantly. But what's brilliant is the arrow, the murder weapon. It then melts, yeah. mm. dries out. There's yeah. no murder weapon. And yeah. then you can take apart the bow. Another, and another one, Steve, is to stab them, then them. stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same. Because no murder weapon. No, but there's no. No, but you've got to get into the building. This is the point. You're across the street. Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow What, what about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, not an arrow on a string, because that's not gonna work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loop- Good loop point, good in? point, good no, point. Rick, I, I no, Rick, No, the ice way, arrow is the I only way. The ice right, arrow is genius. the only perfect method it's, of assassination. It's an, that was on Columbo. Was it? But th there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh- The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because there's no fingerprints on it and stuff. You're having an Africa. I defy you to win. There's no win fingerprints on a you. bullet when it goes through your Never. head at 12,000 miles. Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away! No, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it! Seen the no, you can't burn a gun. Rick, my point is. Melt it. No, the point is it's fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. Ricky, never Wear try gloves. kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice arrow is the only way. I bet that was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That, that was, that's one of them. The other one is, do you know what I was saying the other week <sighs> about the, uh, 
the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff. Yeah. I weigh around that, put the poison in the ice cube, you quickly have a swig before it's melted before it's and they'll melted. go, that's alright, I can drink that, it's not dangerous. Just say, oh, hang on, I'll show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, you say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty. They'll have it, they'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd have, <laughs> you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and like thirty thousand pounds or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well, is <laughs> that it? It's the perfect crime, So, so, so it's, hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. One, I remember once, right, an American came to our school, we were all about thirteen or fourteen, and he was just the, he was like, you had to be his friend. And it was like people vying for his attention, because he was sort of like this cool American bloke, right? And, uh, he was like good, good at sports, straight, he's always, you know, it's just great. And, uh, I remember someone saying like, tube, a toothpaste, and he, and he laughed, said, tube, tube. And I go, well, what is it? They said, it's tube, it's tube, right? And people go, no, it's tube, right? And they go, it's tube, right? And I went, I say, I say tube. <laughs> he went, and they sort of looked at me, and they just thought, you liar. <laughs> I said, no, I say, oh, let me think, oh, tu tu no, I say tube. Oh. When you're a kid, like, any American you ever meet is the coolest thing. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's a huge, fat bloke yeah. wearing Bermuda shorts and a camera on his neck, it's cool, because they yeah. speak with an American accent. Well, that is cool. And, that's, and they say- Being a huge, fat bloke in Bermuda shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's you're... what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm growing into that look, says Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian tourist look. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, so anything, you know, sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, if I could say, like when I was sort of f 14, if I could have said sidewalk, fender, you know, yeah. I always wanted to go into a sandwich shop and just order something on rye. I want to be, one, I want to be one of those 80 year old, um, sort of Yiddish blokes, those old, you know, sort of like old vaudeville Jewish guys, um, that, you know, they sit in diners and talk, you know, like, like, like Walter Matow talks. Right, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, I, yeah. I want to, I want to grow into that, a long coat, and I go, ish. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oy vey. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Yeah. Well, convert to Judaism initially. Yeah. Be your first port and then just tour the vaudevillian, you know, circuit. Yeah. In the cat skills. Or the mic, some kind of schmuck. Yeah. Something like that. What do you, uh, Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> Get on my nerves! When the whole American. nation there, <laughs> reduced. <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, name dropping. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, cause that, that's- Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? <laughs> that, you, were, you, were, you were sort of clean, your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There, went there for Christmas, and um, um, there's loads of them there, cause that, that's like really close to America, that's like <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type It's exactly that. like that. Yeah. So it's, it's it's exa that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So- But well, I think they call it the tropical Blackpool, <laughs> <don't they? laughs> yeah. But they were going on- That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we're going on about the, uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um. <laughs> Brilliant. The, uh, the 9-11. The 9-11. That's what they call really? it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is terrible. It's like people who say 24-7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans working my say ass that. off 24-7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do that what? American accent again? Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, the 9 11. Where, yeah. where are you from? <laughs> what, what? Uh, can we we, we find America is that? <laughs> yep. that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Sure. But can Carl, you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't, I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's, he's not gonna <laughs> Have like- Have you been to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me, again. Got on your nerves? Um, yeah. <laughs> went, went for some food. Yeah. Um, and it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we sure. went for some steak, <laughs> and- we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse. Yeah. Right. And, um, sat down, had, had the steak and that's huge, big, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave, we didn't have much money for a tip, do you know over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So, um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was, it might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But, he didn't have to do that much, we didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money, so he brought us like the main course, and I don't know, sure, a couple, sure, couple sure, of Diet sure. Cokes. And, um, Anyway, left them the, the, the 60p. Yeah. On the way out, 
and it comes running over. Excuse me, sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean... Yeah. It's outrageous. What did you say? I said, all right, then. Cause yeah. I mean, I, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so it got us a couple of more. Is it good coats. fun with you on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. You surprise me. <laughs> what, what do you expect out of a holiday car? What do you, what do you, what do you go sort for? Of soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> you liar. You liar. What, what did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? <laughs> a lot of crabs on the beach. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, well, we're we're nearly done, aren't we? We are almost finished. Uh, it's just a couple shame. of um, great tracks. Got a few laughs. Maybe we've had a few laughs, haven't <laughs> yeah, we? Exactly. I've perked up. Yeah, you have. You have. Yeah, you've no, lost it here a bit, though. You feel a bit. It sounds, it sounds like you're a bit down again. Well, it's, uh, that's, that's just two hours work in okay. one long sure. stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon we could do a three-hour show now. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Skin of the teeth, sort of just. Yeah, we yeah. barely got away with this. Really? This is beginning to fall apart now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. But yeah, we've had a good time. Though. We've had we've had a few laughs, as I say. Um, I just think a car on the beach. He said he started winding the crabs up because he got bored. Mm. He started throwing sand at them. It's did it like a child's experiment. When you were in California, you weren't aggrav aggravating butterflies, were you? Because <laughs> oh, that's a misdemeanor. It's scary though. The weather's really freaky. Where? In uh, California. Is it? Yeah. In the day, it's dead nice. Come six o'clock, it goes black, and then right. the rain comes down. It's freaky. Uh, is that every single day, Carl, or was that just the week you were there? Uh, every day. I was there for about a week. It happened every day. Uh, so as far as you're concerned, that happens all, all year <laughs> round? Yeah, good thing. So what you're saying is if people are booking a holiday, they should be conscious of this, because <laughs> yeah. it will always happen. <laughs> California tourism. Oh, that's a fact. Think it does. I think it does. But, but, okay. but why did you start throwing sand at crabs, by the way? Just because, um, you get bored on the beach. You sat there, you, you look around. Yeah. Um, and then I saw these crabs, and I was watching the way they move around, and yeah, what they funny, do, isn't it? Sort of to that annoy you the way they moved. No, I mean <laughs> it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good of you. But uh, it was just uh, what I was weighing up is they're yeah. quite close to the sea, so sure. I was watching the sea. Come they up. like it close to the sea, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't like it too close. No. So, like, the sea was coming close to them, they'd run towards me. Yeah. So as the sea came in to, to them, I was chucking sand the other way, and it was like, ooh. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. How long did that keep you occupied for? <laughs> the last three days, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen, uh, I don't know if I've described this before, do you remember a classic Paul Daniels episode where, uh, Paul is having tea with some baboons, I think. Chips. Yeah. Full circle. And, um, yeah. he's got a little box, and inside the box is a mirror. And he gives it to the chimp, and it looks in the box, and it's confused by its own reflection. It can't figure it out, so it's looking behind the box, trying to figure out: is there another monkey behind it? Yeah, yeah. It goes on like that. It's dazed and confused. It was there for for weeks, just staring into it. I imagine you're a bit like that. <laughs> <on the beach laughs> yeah, that's great. I think that's my analogy. Like <laughs> yeah. Paul Daniel's chimps. <laughs> yeah, I kept a crab once for a week when we went to Bognor. Um, it was me and mum and my nan in an oh <laughs> party time. <laughs> 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 oh man, I love it. You I haven't, the, you the, haven't the lived. Never you haven't lived until you've woken up to the sound at three o'clock in the morning of your nan um, having a wee in a tin bucket in an echo in round a caravan. Man alive! Yeah, I was about <laughs> nine. You'd brought a chick back. <laughs> <laughs> I was about nine, right? <laughs> and I just kept a crab in a first day. In the bucket. In a. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Uh, no, I found it on the beach and I brought it back and I kept it in a little bowl in the sink. And then the last day, it started to smell a bit. And then the last day, my mum said, Go and put it back. And I went and put it back. <laughs> so I had a pet crab for a week. And did it did it die? What happened to no, it? No, no, it, was, it just got bored. Sure. It, just, it didn't do a lot. Did it the... start throwing sand at you? <laughs> 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 Well, I've enjoyed myself. I have. But can I just say, we don't just like, you know, muck around and do stupid things and play great music. <laughs> We're also informative. And we I'm going to leave London with this tip that Carl, for no reason, just told me. Um, do you want to do it, Carl, or shall I tell him what you just said? Rick, we haven't got much time. You better explain yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you got, he said, you've been on the Millennium Wheel. I went, no, he went, well, if you do, here's a tip. Go when there's lots of disabled people on there. And I, I was up for it. I went, why? He went, you get more for your money, because they have to keep stopping and letting them off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you get an extra six minutes. <laughs> oh. All right. Good, solid advice if you're so going to go there today or tomorrow. Yeah. 